place. <coughs> now we saw, like when we were talking about program perspective, rather, uh, like how the symbols are captured and how the information is stored, and so on. So let us move further. And even we addressed how exactly stack is used internally. Okay, to to really control execution of your program. Correct. Now there are multiple registers which are added, uh, which are available with your system. Now currently the laptop that I'm using and the OS I'm using is supporting 64 bit OS. So my operating system is 64 bit. So when when I try, say for example, when I when I write GCC. If I write this, okay, and now I write gdb dot slash dot. So we can see, like as we used dash g, so it was meant for uh, that we have added info debugging information in the code. What are the executable code that gets generated? Fine. So let us write the point main, and let me say r. Let me write this. Info all registers instead of display. You write info all. So you will see here, like like the way that I wrote the code. Okay, the way that I translated the code. If you see, if you recall, the command that I fired was this. I haven't used dash m32 there, correct? I, I haven't asked my system to create an object code of 32 bit size. This size in the sense uh, the instruction architecture. So as I haven't mentioned that, so it automatically created a 64 bit one. So like these are the registers. So R means you for 64 bits. So RAX, RBX, RCX, RDX, RSI, RDI, RVP, RSP. These are the standard general purpose resistors, 64 bit ones. So these are additional ones with 64 bit. R8, to R15. So these again are 8. So 8 plus 8, totally 16 resistors are there, which are 64 bit. Okay, with a 60, like uh, on a 64 bit architecture. But if I create a code, with uh, instruction set to be used is M32. Machine instructions to get M32. Let me debug that code again. Now, if I write break main, run info or list. <clears throat> now you will see we have EAX. Now see the order EAX, ECX, EDX, EBX, ESP, EVP, ESI, EDI. These all are 32 bit register. <clears throat> now, when we say 32 bit registers, these are going to definitely play an important role, no matter whether they are 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit, or 64 bit. So, we will see uh, in today's session like how exactly this discrimination is done with respect to the size. So, this is your program counter called an instruction pointer. So, IP, EIP, IIP. <laughs> Uh, IP instruction pointer, EIP 32 bit instruction pointer, RIP 64 bit instruction pointer. Okay, there is a register called flag register, so E flags. So for your uh, 64 bit, it will be R flag. Okay, so there are these are segment registers. So CS code segment, stack segment, data segment. These three are extra segments: ES, FS, and GS. Now when uh, code gets loaded in memory. Mainly only these uh, two would be important data segment and code segment. Stack is used internally by the system itself. It doesn't tell you this. Now, as these are of say, for example, registers, if they are they are going to occupy, for example, 64 KB space. 
as an example, 64 KB space. Now what will happen if my code crosses that boundary? Like because my code would be stored, whatever my executable would be, my uh, code would be stored in in that particular uh, register. So code segment would be holding uh, what you can call it as the executable code of the process. Right? Now if it is going beyond that, because the amount of code that we write may be much more. Maybe much more. Now, whenever we are dealing with these, they would be having definitely an addressing format, like which we said as 32 bit. But ultimately, there would be few other things involved. So, whenever it, it is crossing that boundary of code segment, if it is fixed one, correct? Then, in that case, what happens is these extra segments would be considered there. The extra segments would be considered there. Now, when 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 it would be possible to make use of extra segments, now there are different operating modes which are used by your system, like real mode, protected mode. You must have seen that in uh, some of the operating system books. You would be having some limitations with respect to making use of these all. Now, whenever we are saying that between two sections, between two segments, if there is a boundary, if you try to cross the boundary, it may not permit you. Like, for example, if you start learning, like uh, I'm referring one book for you people, rather for an operating system concepts. <clears throat> so, no matter whether operating system book is the uh, operating system course is there for you or not, but you should start reading the book that I'm referring now for you. Okay, so uh, the book title is Design of Unix Operating System. So if I say So the design of Unix operating system by Maurice Bach. So suppose if I remove this PDF, I'm not interested in PDF. You, you can read either of the book. Okay. So this was the book that, uh, say for example, you should read. No matter whether you are reading a PDF or whether you are reading, uh, say, a hard copy. If at all you are you are wishing to keep, say, some books in your own personal library. Considering that you want to have your uh, career either in teaching, research, or in industry, in all the cases, you should have this book uh, in into your own personal library. Now why this is? This is one of the best book that can tell you many more details about uh, how an operating system design. Now the books that we refer for operating system mainly are, say, for example. Uh, by Galvin operating system and many majority of you who did probably education from some university in uh, India. Okay, generally university undergraduate courses have their textbooks and the textbooks are written by their teachers. I'm not referring to those textbooks. I'm referring to the standard reference books. So whenever I'm talking about standard reference books of operating system, I can go with say uh, Andrew Tannenbaum. Correct. Or I can go with Galvin. So you read either of them, but this will give you only overview of how the operating system is. But if at all you are really thinking about learning what you can call it as uh, how internally an operating system looks like or how an operating system should be designed, then this is the best book that you should have into your library and you should read it. Okay. Now, so whenever I'm talking about this particular aspects of these registers, how exactly they are used. 
So let, let us try to uh, say see the registers. So let us let us say we have now as I'm going to address 32 bit architecture. So they are. EX. So there is an order that needs to be followed. So you can write EX, EBX, EX, EDX, not a problem, but I'm purposefully. Writing this. They are 32 bit registers now. Like as we saw, eight eight zero eight six was a 16-bit architecture. Correct. So to support that with the current 32, like we currently having most of the operating system on 64-bit architectures. So to have uh, like to support the earlier infrastructure, we definitely require backward compatibility. Correct. So now the 16-bit architectures are uh, 16-bit registers are. E A X C X D X B X S P B P S I and D F. Now, moreover, there are eight bit registers also, which are sub which are not shown there ultimately, but they are like A H A L, right? A X. So B H, sorry, C H C L. BH DL BH DL. You can see how many of them are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, with this, you always had two registers which are of 16 bit, even though it was 8085 architecture. This was for 8085 architecture. This was for 8086 architecture. And every architecture that came after 80186. For 32 bit support had these registers. Now, like if I have to talk about say 64 bit, so they are RAX, RCX, RDX, RDX, RSP, RBP, RSI, RDI, and then from R8 to R15, R few others. So each one of these architectures had eight, eight, eight general purpose registers. But uh, 64 bit had 16 registers completely, or is having 64, uh, sorry, uh, 64 bit, 16 registers to support the different operations. And there is a huge change, rather, uh, that can be seen at operating system level as well as architecture level. When you talk about comparing, rather comparing um, say 32 bit and 64 bit operating system. Now my task or what I'm going to address is mainly this 32 bit registers. And sometimes you would be we will be referring to these remaining two. Correct. Now these all are registers, and if at all I have to see those registers for you, that that the way that I showed you, you have to write this info. What I wrote was info all registers. So what if I have to see a 64 bit value? So even the value. So at, at every every time, if I have to see this value, I will write a dollar. As in a prefix to my register. name. So if I, if I simply write say EBX, it doesn't recognize that. OK, the debugger can understand that or debug to de, uh, if you want to see values for. Uh, the registers, then you have to write this way. Fine, so let us say let us run the code. Now EX is having some value. So step. EX became zero. Now EX got a return value. Okay, EX also holds a return value of a function. So you can see that the values for this register are kept changing. Right, so this is how I can see this. Now these all are decimal values. If I have to see say binary, I will write T display slash T dollar EX. Okay. Now you still let us say yes. Now this is what you had in decimal. This is what you have in binary, the 32 bit value. So if you say step, 
you can compare this see for example 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 raised to 2 2 raised to 3 2 raised to 4 that's why 16 right so the way that we write in binary so if i write that display in hex so you have to write slash x and if you want to write dot slash o this would be octal so you can specifically make use of these options so if you don't write any of them okay any of the option and if you write simply display dollar ex this would be showing you what the decimal value if at all you want to display that as a binary you have to write this slash t fine okay so slash t is for binary slash t means 2 slash o octal slash x hexadecimal fine so these are the forms which can be used by you to see the values so if at all i have to write ax i also can write it correct if at all i wish to write ah i can write it al now you can see ah is having zero and al is having this value because ah is how ax is written so the way that i wrote it here for ax i wrote ahl now suppose 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is a 8, 8 bit register okay for ah correct now further one more we can go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so this is ax suppose if i uh, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is AX. This is completely EAX. Okay, a 16 bit value. Now you divide this into two parts. So this higher side would be called as AH. This lower side would be referred as AN. Okay, similarly for other registers also, it would be same. Now, whenever we are talking about 32 bit value, okay, now there would not be a higher side of ax it will be ax only 16 bit for 32 bit it will be completely uh, set of four values so if my ah and al are containing zero that means what ax value is zero now in this case we we saw that it was like 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 3 4 so this value was 1 because we wanted that to be 16 correct in our case like early this case the code that we saw here we wanted al value to be this so it skips this uh, uh, prefixes okay earlier prefixes are discarded so it will show only uh, from where you don't have zero included towards left side of that digit binary digit fine okay so if you move further uh, let us say step so sometime would be getting values okay now you can see ax is having 1010 right because hex value is this 10 so 8 plus 2 10 that's why it is showing this so 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 raised to 2 2 raised to 3 2 raised to 3 is 8 8 plus 2 raised to 1 2 so that's why 10 correct right? al is having 10 10 this is having uh, 10 10 i mean to say this is binary 10 10 so that is it is uh, decimal 10 represented as 1010 so if i again say step sometime it would be, the value would be changing so 24 now you can see 24 so 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 raised to 2 2 raised to 3 8 plus 16 16 plus 8 24 that's why al become this right so that's how the register values can be seen in the code any question till this any query Yes, please. If no, we'll move further. Let me know so that I can talk about other things. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now we have seen that in the in the code that I'm using, I'm having printf and scanf. 
what are they by the way what is printf and what is scanf apart from saying that they are functions what exactly they are so our uh, c language teacher always used a terminology called standard functions standard library functions correct so in this case printf and scanf are standard library functions but when i when i try to see let me quit and let me restart i don't want to see the values now of registers so this point name run you can see this show name what is show name what is difference between printf scanf and show name printf scanf are standard functions used from the library and show name is a function defined by the user a user defined function correct am i right now if at all i have to support execution of your function what operating system should do so what operating system does let us see so when it you execute the code okay you write bt to see the stack so it supports it adds a stack when your function gets executed main also is one function so we will say it is a system defined but actually body of this function is defined by us function body function definition is given by us function declaration is only done by the system in its code but ultimately until and unless i write a code main is not useful system cannot do anything with this so i have to define that i have to give the definition of that main that's what we gave so if i see this is the definition that i gave for my main function i wrote l there to display my code i can see this is body of the function written by you or written by me or written by us rather correct now when it reaches to that show name what should happen is a control should be passed to now that show name function okay so if i say display dollar eip this is the current one it, it it is telling us that this is the line that it is executing right now this is a representation that it is having internally main plus 24 so if i say step suddenly i am getting next line so it is going to execute this show name if i say again step now my function entered into or my execution entered into show name now if i write bt i can see that a stack also again is get created so whatever the stacks that are getting created here are referred by the terminology called stack frame now what happens when this stack frame is to be created or you must have seen rather like uh, when when we said uh, the school starts okay for a junior level primary level okay you must have seen first day the kids are welcomed even like uh, most of the times you must have seen there is no formal welcome for uh, say the college students but there is a welcome party that is organized that day you would be treated like you are the ones right when no matter at what age you are experiencing that so stack would be show, created separately for you so that whatever the things like for example i am having a marriage hall i own marriage hall and i always give it on rent so when your somebody approaches me to have it on rent i do give them clean complete clean hall and the person who is taking it on rent is supposed to clean it the way that i gave i gave him or her now if there is a problem problem in the sense of there is a damage made then you have to pay that damage is generally an error in programming system that error may be a runtime error after the execution was done or while the execution was going on if some problem occurs then an individual is supposed to pay so this stack would be created and an environment would be created for you like it looks like you you are owning that you are having complete control of the system so to 
create that environment, there are two terms. Prologue and epilogue. So I have to preserve, I have to preserve register values. So that function is owning everything now. Function is in control. That's what I'm saying. Preserve earlier values of all registers. Create environment so that it can be used by the function completely. By storing return address. Correct. Epilogue. Whatever the garbage was created. When prologue was created, you executed the function that should be cleaned. Clean everything. And store back all registers to their original values. And destroy the stack. And set IP to value stored as return address. Though I may might have written this in my own words, you can find definition of it uh, in either of the books rather. But this is the general idea. So the stack frame should be created when the function call is and that's what it did. You can see this stack was created. Now we are executing that function. So we are printing this I am in show name. I can see that there is only one stack. Let me go this. Let me execute this. It is executing this code. If I see BT. Now it is at last line. You can see this curve. Curly bracket, correct? It is at last line. Now it has, it should go back to where exactly that call was given, correct? So if I say step, it came back to main. So it came back to main. Now if I say BT, my stack got destroyed. My stack got destroyed. What are the changes those were made by the code? They are revamped. Correct. Now, when I say this, what exactly happening? What exactly is happening? The way that I executed my show name, it was executing that line by line. But when I show this printf, when I am executing this printf, in a single shot, it is printing everything. It printed already this, so it is not shown here. This is our first try, percent D. Correct. If I say step, it is executing my scanf2. Correct. Now, when I say this, ultimately, why a process was not given a chance to read that scanf? Actually, that scanf should get, have been executed. So if I say run, step, get care. Now I am giving a character. I press enter. It is asking me the value. Earlier, this hasn't been shown. It is because it was, it already took my input the way that I pressed enter keys there. Now it took only a single line to execute this. It never entered into printf code. It never entered into scanf code, but it is waiting now for my input. So I gave say 78. 
Now, what exactly happens at runtime whenever it executes printf and scanf, which are not my functions, but they are functions written by this for the system. That's what we call a system functions, standard functions. What are they then? How my system is interacting? How my system is interacting with it? Now we have different things. Like, see, I am writing a code using C language. This would be given to my OS, and OS is interacting with the hardware, underlying hardware, which we generally use as a uh, terminology called CPU. CPU does that whole stuff for processing. Now, my hardware doesn't understand printf. My hardware doesn't understand scanf. My OS also doesn't understand what is printf scanf. My OS only understand that there are two important things called as standard input and standard output. STD in, STD out. To interact with these two important things, there should be some mechanism. So that mechanism is handled by something called as US, your OS code called kernel. Your program would be interacting through kernel with the hardware. And to achieve that communication, we have to make use of something called as system calls. In operating system, Windows terminology, we call it as interrupts. Now, how can I know what are the different standard uh, or is really the what you can call it as system calls used for my code? Let us check. So there is a command, not command, but utility called M S trace. Trace system calls and signals. So if I write Say for example, then let us maximize this. Let us try to decrease the size. I don't know whether it will be visible, but you can see. Okay, so let me maximize and let me take up. From here it started. Now think of this, there's a classroom, like in the meetings, rather most of the times in these meetings, as you all are added in the team, so you don't require any permission to enter in the meeting, correct? But think of this, if it is a classroom, generally, as per habit, what we say, may I come in? Then I identify you as a teacher, whether are you part of this class or not? Then I say, okay, yes. Then when you enter in the class, you try to see where is the free space available. If it, is, it cannot be located by you, somebody will tell you or I will tell you, okay, go sit at line number four, bench number three. So I identified you that yes, you are student of my class. That then I'm giving you the roll number, the number. Once it is given, then I have to provide you space. I have to provide you space to occupy for where exactly you would be going. So I definitely must have to communicate with my memory manager, file manager and so on. To have. Your space occupied. So if I go below, let me not talk about others. But I can see. OK, so let me start this one more time because I entered so many keys, that's why it is showing me things. Now, it is using this right. I am in show name. Can you see this? This was the printf code that we wrote. So it says 16. I am in show name, return value is 16. So if I compute number of characters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It displayed 16 characters. How many characters are displayed? There is something called one. This one is telling it that you have to display this at standard output. Now it is expecting my input here. You can see. Read. So if I give say four. Four and slash and I press enter there is taken. Now it is writing there. This is our first try 90 it displayed. Now this was not a scanner. Probably this was a gate care. Now this must be the scan up. So let me write 67. What are the value that I write? It is taking read and write. So they are system call. So let us write man write. Now it says it is not the right that we are expecting. The right that is shown here is something different. So to see that you have to write man to write. This is the system call. Linux programmers manual. You should see here too. So if you recall, we saw man man. Correct. With that man man second sec second section in manual was for system call. So let me fire it man man. You can see. Number two is for system calls functions provided by the kernel to interact with your hardware. This three is for your printf. So if you write simply printf, this printf is for user command. I wanted printf for my C code. So you have to write man three printf. So this is for your C function. So now when I when I see this man to write, it says there is a file descriptor like what you call it is file pointer. And I assume I haven't seen your C skills. I don't know whether you know C programming or not, but those who wrote file processing programs definitely must have taken their variable name as FP capital file star FP. Why the name was given as FP? One option was OK, it is written by S1 Kanetkar. Second option was it is a file pointer. What value it holds? It holds an address, a number. Where and the files. Which file rather not where which file should be updated or used. So this is file descriptor. Second thing is the string to be displayed. That's why that I am in uh, show name was shown. And third was size amount of characters to be written. So this FD, if you see this FD would be file descriptor. OK. You can see. And we saw for write, we saw it is one and for read it was zero. So if I write read here to. It is same integer file descriptor buffer and count read and write are same only functioning is different. One of them is going to read one of them is going to write. All parameters are same. And it is going to return size okay, of number of characters that it got as an input. So if you see here, I gave four slash n. Right, so two characters, that's why size is two. I gave 67 slash n for it. It is six, seven and slash n. That's why three. In this case, when it displayed that I am in so show name, it displayed those characters as 16. So for right, it was number of characters. To be printed. Now where can I find this? What you can call it as. File descriptor that one is this zero is this. Why that one was there? What are the one that we saw here? Why that one was there? Why that zero was there? OK, so let us see that. So for that purpose, I have to be a super user. 
so i assume uh, you should have this directory is asm slash so right here list now it has as my machine itself is a 32 bit a 64 bit machine so if at all i require to see this value let me write this union study dot h 32 dot h okay so they are having something so union study dot h let us see this in interview so i am i am seeing this file from this directory usr slash include and i am talking about unistudy.h so if i see this this gives you po6 standard 2.10 symbolic constants whatever things are used there internally in your compiler so let us go and try to search for that 0 1 values there is there is another value called 2 yes so these are your standard descriptors standard file descriptors standard input file number is 0 standard output file number is 1 standard error would be 2 0 1 2 and that's the reason why when you saw the code okay with this read and write system call this one was meant for standard output this zero was meant for standard input take from read from standard input write to standard output where exactly we saw them Yes, this is the one. At some point uh, of li like at some line. You would be seeing this. These are internally used, so if I if I try to see the object code created. Or the executable created for my file. I have to write obj dump dash d a dot out. So let me write this. So if I see my main, now what exactly is used there? Let us see. Yeah, now your main should be there. See, this is for that thing that I said stack frame. Frame dummy. A stack needs to be created. Correct? Now, can you see printf scanf here? No. They are renamed. There were two calls. For three calls rather. One was for printf. Not three, maybe more. Printf, scanf, get care. And your function. So if I see how many calls are there, let us start. This is number one. This is number two. Two functions. This is number three. This was printf. This was show name. Okay, there was scanf. Right? So these are are shown there, which are used internally. But they are picked from the library, and that's the reason. Like when when I try to see, say, the symbol definition in a dot out, I will see printf to be u show name to be t okay now even if you try to see scanf if at all let us see whether can we see scanf2 
it is showing a spin tap there. This is my scanner. Its definition also is U. Like defined? No, it is undefined. U means undefined. They are picked from the library function or li library that is available around. Okay. Any question till this? I'm expecting questions from your side too. Yes, please. No? Sir, can you explain that right part again? Which one? Which one? Right two, right three. Right system call. You mean right system call? So if you see man to right, this two is for section. Now this is a function which is a system call. These are not available for when I say available, you can directly use this right instead of writing printf. See, whenever you write printf, your printf would be converted to write. Whenever you write get care, your get care will be converted to read. Your scanf would be converted to read. So it would be better if I use directly write, but then write doesn't permit me to write that percent kind of form. So here I explicitly know how many parameters are going to be there in my write function. There are three parameters. First parameter is file descriptor where to write. Next is what to write. That's why we have constant void buffer. This is a string what to write and third is how much to write. How many characters to be written. So file descriptor suppose whenever you are writing say files are FP. You will be writing your FP because whatever like whenever you make use of F printf. OK, let us let us see that. Your F printf contains this files pointer. And remaining things we don't care. OK, because here this dot 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 what what this dot 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 means for us. What this dot 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 means for us? Yes. What this dot 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 means for us? Many arguments. Now when you say many, many means how many? You are not sure about correct. When you're not sure about how many possibly arguments be there. But few functions are there which we know that there are standard parameters taken like for example. This you exactly know how many parameters are. You exactly know for example when you write get care. You exactly know that you would be having. Get care is void. Get C is this. F get C is this. F get S is this. So you exactly know here with the number of arguments. But some functions are there where you really don't know what would be how many arguments are. So in some, they are some form of something called as variadic function. Where number of arguments are not known. So what happens is whenever you are writing a printf, printf. If I try to see the code of printf in in uh, source code of compiler of the library probably. I would be able to see that internally it is making use of write system call only. With the, some uh, internal changes with the code. So ultimately whenever you are using printf it would be converted to write. So every function which is not a user defined function would be converted internally to system calls. Most of them. So you we saw BRK there, correct? That was one of the call. This was for fetching 
a dynamic data, dynamic allocation. I hope you must have heard about malloc. Caloc, correct? Dynamic memory allocation. So we have to adjust the data segment size. So BRK and SBRK are used there. And like even if we don't have anything written in our code, but when we write this through S trace, the first call after this open, this exec, first call after this exec is BRK. Exec CVE, this also is a system call internally used to execute your code. Now, what is the process in operating system? What is the process? Yes. I hope you must have did your bachelor's and in bachelor's you did OS course. What is process? Uh, sir, a program under execution. So this is a really smallest definition that one can talk about, correct? A program in execution. Now when a program is converted to process, who is responsible to do so? This is the call. Which loads your program into memory to call it as a process. And that is the reason it would be getting a PID for your code. Process ID by creating it as a process. And so on, like everything that you see before opening bracket is a system call. Close, open, open at, p read, f stat, p read 64. All of these are system calls, which are internally used whenever we say a machine code, machine language, something like this. So, though it is in binary hex at machine level, but at programming level, it is like functions only. And it is going to make sure that it is going to execute it or it is going to make use of this. Now, these, the, the, how many system calls are there then? Okay, so how to see them? So, let us see. So, yeah, so if you go to this direct, this file, note down this, slash USR, slash include, slash ASM, slash, Unistate32.h. These all are system calls used internally by the system. So you must have heard about fork. We already saw read. We use we have seen write. Okay, read and write. We have seen rather in front. There are so many. These are 32 bit ones. So let me go to last number. They are kept adding like the numbers 435 right totally 435 so whenever you are using the exit zero actually you are using this signal exit now if i write here as 64 then there there are again another set of so again it is 435. Now the numbers associated with every system call is called a system call number or interrupt number. Right? Say for example, exit 1, 4, 2, read 3, write 4, open 5, close 6, with PID 7, create 8. They are the ones which are getting used there internally. So when you simply write F open file name, I hope some of you must have used F open, correct? So F open file name. So what, what you do? See whether the file is available there. If it is not available, create it. So that time create gets called and then open gets executed. If it is already available, then it executes open. And towards the end, it makes use of close. 
it makes use of close somewhere so let us see that close to can you see close yeah this one so whenever you say f open either it could be create open or open create open close or open close fine so they are there are different system calls used uh, by your operating system that's what sometimes you call it as interrupts so let me save this file uh, for you i will share that 2 3 2022 i am sharing this file uh, from uh, chat window you can refer this at any point of 